On today's spooktacular episode of Behind the Frame, we're gonna see how to make a yellow lantern power battery for candy. How's it going, everybody? And welcome to a Halloween special Behind the Frame episode. The show where we show you guys how to create great props and effects from your favorite movies, shows, games, and more. I'm Josh. Halloween is coming up very soon, and other than getting to wear a great costume and going around your neighborhood, what's the next best thing? Keep being a house. No. Uh, ding dong ditch a house. No. Like, other than involving houses and vandalism. It's candy. Lots of candy. So, to help with your candy cravings, all you guys, you know you have it. How are you gonna carry around all of that candy? I have a solution. A power battery from the Lantern Core of Sinestro. You know, because Sinestro is the fear and Halloween and you get scared, okay? But fear not. We're not gonna leave you in the dark. We're gonna show you how to build it. So let's see what we need to do it. The household items that we'll need for this build are rubber bands, a clothes hanger, and plastic bottle caps. Just two of them is fine. The tools I used are a Dremel or rotary tool, sandpaper, and a heat gun. Other materials I used were a plastic eight inch globe, two push lights, four cereal bowls, one three inch PVC coupling, E6000 adhesive, that's a lot of E's. Spray paints and batteries for those push lights. The first step was to draw a baseball-like stitching pattern onto the plastic globe. I didn't have a laser guide, so I stretched two rubber bands over the globe to section it off into equal quadrants. I found something to trace half circles into the globe with and did that with a marker. Once it's just the way you like it, use your rotary tool's cutting bit to trace out your line. Take some coarse sandpaper and sand the globe, keeping a consistent grain pattern. I used alternating sand patterns only to differentiate the halves of the globe. I also sanded off the lip of the globe so that it won't get in the way when we're gluing stuff to it. Next, you take two of the cereal bowls and then sand them down again to match the texture of the globe. Once they are the way we want them, carefully heat up the bottoms of them a little bit at a time, then gently press it against the globe until there is a close to seamless appearance. Just remember when you're heating up the bowl to do it away from the globe, but if you decide to do it on top of the globe, it'll melt the whole piece and you're gonna have a bad time. Once the bottom of the bowl is roughed out, make a guide to where you're going to place and glue it. Then use the E6000 adhesive on both the bowl and the globe. Do this to the other side as well with your second bowl. Just wait long enough for your glue to dry and uh, with the E6000 it actually sets pretty quick so you can go back to sanding and cutting anything else you need within minutes. When you're going out to buy bowls, buy bowls without lips like this. But if you do, just use your Dremel tool to sand them off. Before the top and bottom pieces can be glued onto the globe, you have to cut your PVC ring or coupling in half. With just a wave of the Dremel tool, BAM! It's done. And look, there's even a nice little ring around the middle of each one. Now we sand down the PVC rings and the red bowls like we've done to everything else up to this point. Cut a hole out of the middle of one piece so it has a place to put your sweet, sweet candy stuffs. Now glue the PVC rings onto the bottom of the two bowls. If you thought ahead, unlike me for this part, you should have glued your bowls into the right quadrants so that the natural hole of the globe is situated or situated on top so that you can put your candy in it after uh, that hole's in there. But I didn't, so I just made some extra work for myself. But it wasn't too hard, it's just dremel it out like everything else you do. Then glue the top and bottom halves onto the globe as well. Next, drill a small hole into the bottle caps. Place them where they'll soon be glued down. Drill a hole into the sides of the globe where the handle will come out and glue them in place. I just use a scrap clothes hanger to keep them in place while the glue set. Once everything is glued together, spray the primer over the entirety of the piece. After a few coats of primer have been sprayed on and dried, spray a couple of coats of yellow yellow until it looks like it was forged in the fires of Karuga. That's where Sinestro's from. Nerd! 
It's facts, truisms, right. real things. Sure. For the handle, take the clothes hanger. I found a gold one so I didn't have to paint it. Snap the hook off and bend it into shape. Then stick them into the bottle cap holes. Take the housing off the push lights. Paint them just like you did the rest of the lantern body and let them dry. Reassemble with the batteries in them. Peel off the paper that covers the adhesive pad and slap them on the front and back of your lantern. And that's it. You have made your spooky lantern that holds candy. Right there. Right there. Mm. Insert candy here. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you liked what you saw and leave a comment in the section below if you have suggestions for future prop tutorial episodes. Uh, be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Joshua underscore E underscore long. And you can now follow me on DeviantArt at Dr. What 93. No matter what you guys do, be sure to have a fun and enjoyable Halloween and be safe. Egg houses. No, we'll be back to this again. Tune in next Thursday to see Scott show you guys how to create like Green Lantern shoo pew pew bows. The effects. Let's do it, and go! What? What? <laughs> I don't know what happened. And the lantern power battery! Ooh, it fell off! Because <laughs> <laughs> I remember, movie shows, games, and more, movie shows, and games, and more. The bowls into the right quadrants. <laughs> what is that what is word? Quadrant. <laughs> quadrant. <laughs>